Hi everyone, my name is Jody from Yoga by the Lake and welcome to a sneak peek behind the scenes into my studio. Today we are still continuing on with our yellow chakra. So that is the third chakra. And this chakra is known for decision making. Could be divine download, it could be whatever's inspiring to you, but it's all about decision making. Today I'm going to be talking about a three-dimensional artwork that I absolutely love, which is sewing. And I'm going to be creating my own patterns for this sewing project using fabric markers, paint, and a little bit of ingenuity. The theme is still yellow, so I'm going to be continuing on with that. And I wanna talk a little bit today about one self-care topic that sometimes can make us feel a little uneasy, and that is time management. So we're gonna wrap all of this up together as I work through my creative process today. All right, let's get started. If you have had time to go and check out my store on Etsy, then you know that I have been creating bibs and kids toys and sensory pull toys for children and toddlers for quite a few years now. I actually was selling before the pandemic in a shop in Beacon, New York. I want to continue this process and I've started to really branch out of just the tactile fabric that you can buy at the store and creating my own patterns and designs and using fabric paint and fabric markers. So these are some designs that I had prototyped and I want to kind of expand on this. I was playing with some different ways to get the text on, and I think I found the way that's gonna work best, which will be through a heat vinyl transfer. So this didn't really appeal to me. It's pretty rough, and you can see, maybe not from there, but there's like a border that kind of goes around it, which I've hidden a little bit, and I will definitely put these up for sale on my site so that if you like any of these, you can get them at a discount because they are prototypes. This one probably came out the best, um, but you can definitely feel that there is a bit of a texture change, but it's definitely one of my favorites. Now, the thing you'll notice is they come with a snap. So I install the snap and I do all the sewing and then the backs will match into whatever colors I have chosen for the front design. And I try to make them as unique and as individual as the children that they'll be going to. So what happens now? So this is the creative process that we're focusing on. These are two that I, again, prototyped and I liked it, I enjoyed it, but I really thought the text could be a lot cleaner and a lot neater. So I'm gonna use my Cricut to do that and some computer ingenuity. And I will be continuing to design my illustrations on these bibs in a way that makes sense for what we're working on. So we're gonna be working on yellow for the solar plexus. And that brought to mind maybe this bee idea. So I'm going to be playing with this concept of a bee and that yellow and wrapping it up into my artwork today. I like to start with a pencil and kind of design out what my bib will look like. I know for this, I wanna leave enough room for my text and I want to get clever with my text. If you have any feedback on what you'd like to see on a bib or, or any kind of apparel that I'm doing, I'd love to hear from you. For this particular set, I'm starting with a white background, but that doesn't mean it has to stay white. I could choose to change the base color to this at any time. I'm going to start drawing using my pencil. I have to keep in mind where my text might go and how big I want it to be. This is the first time I'm trying to draw before adding the text. It might come down to it where I need to add the text and then draw, but the whole process seems to be pretty fluid and flexible. So here I'm just going to start by drawing lightly with my pencil and it's going to be really hard to see, but that's because I need this to be as light as possible so that when I go to wash these, it all comes out and pencil doesn't stay. It really does wash out nicely from clothing and fabric. If you've ever tried drawing on fabric before, please let me know how it went with you. Am I missing something in my process that would be helpful for me? I'd love to hear your feedback. So anytime you want to share with me, just leave a comment below and we can chat about it. So here I have my quick sketch of just 
one, two, three bees and some three flowers here. I think my text will fit really nicely in here. If it has to step on a bit of the image, and what I mean by that is when I place the text down, if it has to kind of overlap, then I'm okay with that. I think I'm going to add some sort of yellow and black border to the entire thing to kind of give it that look of maybe like a bee starting like, I don't know, probably right about here. So I'll probably shorten this wing just a little bit, or maybe I'll come up here. And I'll make those decisions after I'm done my initial sketch. So these are super markers. They're for fabrics. They're t-shirt liners. And you have to let them sit for 24 hours. I like to use the heat gun and then iron everything really, really well. And it's soft. It's not like a rough texture that you would normally get with paint. So I really enjoy working with these. All right, now it's time to start with some of the painting. I keep the painting really simple because there's not much that needs to be truly accentuated. I don't have to get into all the tiny details. This is very small workspace. So sometimes it's nice just to be able to focus on shapes and colors as best makes sense for the artwork itself. And I like to add a little bit of water to it because it smooths it out. I have a real thing when it comes to textures. I don't like my textures to not make sense to, for me. Uh, rough to smooth to rough to smooth kind of gets under my skin. So I try to um, be really aware of that when I'm working on work like this so that the texture doesn't keep changing and it stays consistent throughout. So as I'm enjoying this painting process, let's talk a little bit about this third chakra and some self-care stuff. <laughs> we are going to be talking about time management. Um, as soon as I hear the word management, it kind of makes me prickle because that would mean that there's some kind of systemic thing in place and I have to manage it and then I kind of get turned off by it all. I don't know if that happens with you. You can let me know down in the comments if the word management just kind of makes you not want to do the thing. But why don't we talk about it just in the sense of using it as the word instead of attaching to it in this moment at this time. So oh, the solar plexus is the third chakra and it governs our personal power and our decision making. All right, so when that third chakra is balanced and aligned through doing things that bring us joy, different yoga practices, some breathing exercises, then we feel like we're more in control and we have more power or self-empowerment to make better decisions around our time and our decision making. So we utilize this energy to make intentional choices on how you prioritize your tasks and align them with your values and goals. Okay, so I had to do this recently. I was very overwhelmed. I have been working on many different projects and I was feeling incredibly, incredibly overwhelmed by a paper scheduler because it, I would have to erase my pen and it was this whole thing. Like, you know, you go down to write something, like wake up at 6 a.m. But if you wake up at 6.30, you have to adjust your whole schedule. So instead of trying to like push through it and be like, oh, like I'm bad, like I just need to do this better. I said, you know what? I'm gonna sit here for a while and find the right program to use. And I ended up going with my iCloud iPhone calendar because if I needed to, I could just click it, edit what it was and adjust it in there without feeling like I had somehow messed up writing down all the things I needed to get done or I wanted to prioritize. And also you have to write it down every single day or every single week. And it was just incredibly overwhelming. If you're an artist, a parent, an educator, you know your to-do list goes on for literal decades. So it can feel like, ah, way too overstimulating to try to write it all down in that one minute that you finally have the clarity to say, I'm gonna prioritize 
exercise in the morning and then that doesn't happen and then you have to erase it. You know, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So this kind of brings us to our next, our next subject, which is balancing control and adaptability. So one of the qualities of control in the third chakra is the need for balance. And that really resonates with effective time management. So when you're creating your schedule, it's really important if you're going to be activating through balance. This is what happens when you, you talk about something you care about while you're painting something you care about. This would have uh, probably done better as, you know, straight lines, but whatever. <laughs> it's all good in the hood. So in this case, let me show you how I'd, how I'd fix this, because this, this is doing its own thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some water and a larger brush, and I'm just going to color it, paint it all in yellow. Now this yellow is kind of pretty. It has like a little bit of a, a shine or glitter in it. So it's, it's actually really nice. It's not just a, a boring yellow. Okay, let's do some flowers while we talk about our next segment here. I got all sorts of distracted. Okay, so let's talk about, let's uh, continue with our discussion about balance control and adaptability so like i was saying before when i have a schedule and i've written things down in said stone even though it's it's not it's my schedule it played like this trick on my myself that i wasn't good enough to complete all these ridiculous tasks that i had set forth forth for myself and then i felt really out of control so when we're creating structured schedules and this is where i feel like i really struggled I would create a very structured schedule for myself. I'm gonna wake up at seven. This is how I'm, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna wake up at seven, then I'm gonna do, do this and do this and do this. And I would get really upset with myself when that didn't happen. So the ability to remain flexible and adjust the plans as needed without sacrificing your sense of empowerment, without sacrificing your sense of empowerment. So you set the schedule, right? Maybe there's certain things that you know you have to do, so that's out. But then there's other things that you can be flexible on. If you are on your off day as an educator and you don't have children at home, then maybe that just means getting done whatever feels like is, is the priority of to get done. And that can be your own self-care but maybe your own self-care, like actually taking a real mental health day on a weekend is something that you prioritize to the point where like, until it's done, not until the calendar says you need to be done. And I think that that's a really big shift in the mind. So our last like topic here, is motivation and self-discipline. I don't know if this happens to you, but I get really, really motivated. And then my motivation kind of wanes or I get overwhelmed, which is probably more the truth is the overwhelmingness of what it is I have to complete or maybe the process of completing it gets a little overwhelming. So the energy of the solar plexus chakra actually fuels self-discipline and motivation so if you're working on balancing that solar plexus you will feel more balanced and more motivated to continue working on the things that are empowering to you and finding that self-discipline well let's say once that's fully balanced once this space is fully balanced then you are more likely to stay self-disciplined, especially in the areas of self-care, because those areas of self-care work together to balance the solar plexus or the third chakra. So I've been spending a little time here telling you to balance your third chakra, but I haven't really given you any examples of what I mean by that, besides doing yoga and maybe dedicating to some creative, creative outlet. Practicing self-awareness, meditating, journaling, that's all really good stuff for balancing that third chakra. It's just great for your mental health too. Now there's establishing clear boundaries. 
boundaries around your time, things that you want to prioritize, your mental energy, your mental load. That's really important for balancing the sacral chakra. Then there's also engaging in empowering activities. So maybe right off the bat, you can think about a couple of activities that are empowering to you. For me, one activity is riding horses. I find that to be extremely empowering. Uh, for you, it might be going for a bike ride, singing, dancing, moving in a way that's inspiring and brings empowerment to you. Maybe it's wearing clothing that makes you feel very empowered. So there's lots of ways you can activate there. Now, visualization is another good one, which is why I do these videos with you, not only to give you a sneak peek into my process, but I'm helping you balance your chakras in the process. So when you do visual affirmation, especially of the color yellow, you are targeting and hyper-focusing on the third chakra. So all the yellow that's in my artwork here, you just take all that in and let it do what it does best, which is just balance through that third chakra. You can do that with clothing, maybe you have a scarf, maybe you have just a picture of a sunset with a lot of yellow in it. Sometimes that's really helpful too. And let's be honest, and I know you're not gonna like this one, but overall healthy lifestyle choices help to balance all of the chakras. It's a good habit to have and to stay really conscious of. And when I was making my little list of things I had to do on my digital calendar that was super flexible, and set up for me and my habits, I, um, I found that prioritizing exercising and eating at a certain time each day has helped me feel more empowered. So these are just some things that you can do to help you on the greater scheme of things, especially when it comes to finding self-care around time management, because it's tricky. I'm not gonna pretend it's not. It's a pretty tricky process. I think this is adorable. Did it take me a little longer than I had thought it would? A little bit. Does that matter? Not really. I think it's super cute. They will be, they will be available on my shop and I'm really excited to see how the letters will come out on this. So as I mentioned before, I was struggling a lot with my schedule and that is because I am on the cusp of creating and submitting to publishers for my very first illustration publication of a children's book. And there are so many details and so many things that I have to cover before this all happens. I'm very excited for this, but it's a brand new branch of my journey. Those of you who have been following for a while, you know that I used to be an art teacher in public schools and I've moved on to pursue my dreams and wellness, taking care of others, and of course the creative arts, which are always been near and dear to my heart. So we still have a few more weeks of this yellow chakra to enjoy. So I hope to see you next time. Please like this video and of course subscribe to my channel. Please make sure you hit that notification button too. I'm always publishing new work for caregivers, parents, and of course educators, and those working with children around the subject of self-care. These things are so vital, especially in today's day and age. Please make use of me. I am here for that. Thank you so much for joining me. Have a warm and wonderful rest of your day.